Chapter 1 Dawn had yet to appear when Rahaf tumbled into consciousness, courtesy of an impatient nudge. Stop your laziness, girl. Your brothers and father are almost ready to leave. Her mother gave Rahav one more unnecessary shove. Rahav groaned and gave up on rest. Bleary-eyed and sore, she forced herself to rise from her bedroll. For two months she had been doing the work of men, waking before daybreak and wrestling the land all day with little food, water, or rest to renew her strength. It was useless. Even at fifteen and only a girl, she could see that. Their land had produced nothing but dust— like the rest of Canaan, Jericho was in the grip of a brutal drought. Though she knew their efforts to be wasted, every day she pushed herself almost past endurance, because as long as they stayed busy, her Abba had hope. She couldn't bear the thought of his despair. "'Child, hurry!' her mother snapped. Rehaf, who had already folded her bedroll and was almost finished dressing, continued her silent preparations at the same pace. She could move no faster if the king's armies were at the door. Her father entered the room, chewing half-heartedly on a piece of stale bread. His face, pale and drawn, glistened with sweat. Rahav finished tying her sash with a quick motion and snatched a piece of hard barley cake that would serve as breakfast and noonday meal. Giving her father a tight hug, she said, "'Good morning, Abba.' He stepped out of her embrace. "'Let me breathe, Rahav. Turning to his wife, he said, I've made a decision. If I find no sign of a crop today, I'm giving up. Rehoff sucked in her breath just as her mother let out an agitated wail. Imri, no! What will become of us? Her father shrugged and walked outside. Apparently, his season of denial was at an end. He was admitting defeat. In a haze, Rehoff followed him. She knew this day would be no different from the others. The thought of her father's wretchedness made her cringe. Her brothers, Joa and Garam, were waiting outside. Garam munched on a raisin cake, a luxury their mother saved for her eldest son. His wife of one year, Zora, stood close, speaking in tones too soft for Rehav to hear. In spite of her worry, Rehav bit off a smile at the way they held hands, Theirs had been a love match, a rare occurrence in Canaan. Although she teased her elder brother at every opportunity, Rahav's heart melted at the thought of such a marriage. Sometimes in the cover of darkness when the rest of the family was long asleep, she dreamt of having a husband who would cherish her as her brother did his Zora. Lately, however, her thoughts had been too consumed by worry to leave room for pleasant daydreams. Standing as far off as their tiny garden allowed, Joa, the youngest at fourteen, gazed at nothing. Rehaf had not heard him string three words together in as many days. It was as if the drought had dried up his speech. She noticed dark circles under his eyes, and his tall frame seemed gaunt. He had probably left the house with no food in his belly. She reached for the bread wrapped in her belt, tore it in two, and brought it to Joa. Insufficient even for her, it would have to do for both of them. You eat that, young man. Joa ignored her. She sighed. You don't want me nagging at you all the way to the farm, do you? He glared at her with irritation, then held out his hand. She lingered to make sure he ate it, then traipsed after their father. Their pace was brisk as they walked toward the city gates. Rehaf noticed that even Karim, who was rarely given to broodiness, appeared ashen with anxiety. Finally, he broke the silence that hung over them. Father, I went to Ibram in the market as you told me. He refused to sell me oil or barley for the price you said. Either he has doubled his rate since you last purchased from him, or you are mistaken about the price. Send Rehav, then. She negotiated last time. Rehav, you might have said. Karim drawled, a good-natured glint lighting his eyes. One glance at her pretty face, and every thought of sums and profits leaves Ibram's flat head. Not so, Rehav objected, her voice rising higher with annoyance. It has not to do with my face, thank you. I am better at bargaining than you, that's all. Bargaining, you call it? Batting your eyelashes, more like. 
I'll bat my broom at you if you don't watch your tongue. Hush, their father commanded. You do make my head hurt. Pardon, Abba, Rehav said, instantly chastened. As if her father needed more trouble, she must learn to subdue her impulses. He carried so much care on his shoulders, she wanted to be a comfort to him, not an additional burden. She could think of no words that would console him. Instead, following instinct, Rehav reached for her father's hand and held it. For a moment he seemed unaware of her presence, then, turning to gaze at her with an unfocused expression, he registered her proximity. She gave him a reassuring smile. He pulled his hand out of hers. You're too old for hand-holding. She flushed and hid her hand in the folds of her robe. Her steps slowed and she fell behind, walking alone in the wake of the men.